Why is humor funny? Well, humor makes you laugh. And laughter serves as this bonding agent between people in social situations. It turns out that you are 30 to 40 times more likely to laugh when there's other people involved in a certain situation than if you were alone. Now, the interesting thing here is, is that laughter isn't exclusive only to human, but can manifest itself in different species and in different forms. However, humor in the form of jokes is exclusive to humans. Laughter is something that has been here for millions of years. But the oldest joke that we can find is a 1900 Sumerian joke, 1900 BC Sumerian joke that said the following, something which has never occurred since time immemorial. A young woman did not fart in her husband's lap. Yes, as you can see, fart jokes are that old. Now, humor is unique to humans in the sense that it allows us to make a collective group of people laugh at the same time, something that animals cannot do. If a comedian goes on stage and cracks up a funny joke and the audience laughs, it means that the audience has socially accepted the comedian, which could make the following jokes by such comedian more funny because the audience is now more comfortable with such a comedian. Do you see what is going on here? Now, there are several theories for humor. The famous ones include the incongruity theory, there is also the superiority theory, and the relief theory. Now, the incongruity theory in basic terms says that when we anticipate something to happen, but then something out of the ordinary happens that doesn't actually match what we expected, this makes the situation funny. Like this joke here. You have two muffins in an oven. Jim the muffin says to Tim the muffin, holy shiz, this is pretty hot. And then the other muffin says, holy crap, a talking muffin. Now, the joke is supposed to end when he said, holy crap, it's a talking muffin, but clearly the animation shows that this is not the case. Why am I doing this? Because I am referencing an inside joke in this case, the Great Muffin Debate, and whether the Great Muffin joke is really funny or not. At the same time, I'm also showing you why when explaining a joke, it doesn't become funny because there is no unexpected or out of an ordinary situation happening to something that you expect. You are expecting exactly as I am telling you right now. Therefore, an explanation is not exactly funny. At the same same time, I'm also showing you, giving you some headway on what exactly is the superiority theory, the second theory of the three theories that I've mentioned, because in this case, you have three characters. You have Tim the Muffin, Jim the Muffin, and Kim the Muffin. Kim the Muffin is not exactly too pleased with Jim and Tim the Muffins telling the same joke over and over again, but Jim and Tim the Muffins are actually enjoying this quite a lot and do find it funny that Kim is not exactly too pleased with them, and that is, in this sense, what the superiority superiority theory is. Now, the incongruity theory, as an example, I can give you this, the ASDF movie. Ooh, a puppy! Oh, careful, honey. He has a knife. Uh, what? No, no, I don't. Which, by the way, you can find a link in the description about the entire thing. And this is why things like that, random things, seem so funny. Now, the superiority theory says that we feel compelled to laugh at other people's mistakes and misfortunes, making us feel superior to such people who have made such mistakes or have such mis misfortunes in the process. As an example, if somebody falls on the floor, that's a classic case of slapstick <laughs> comedy. So we start, we might, if we find it funny, we might start to laugh at them because, you know, we, I, am, I am superior to you. And we could also have other people laughing at the same time. And when this happens, the person that has slipped feels embarrassed because there's a certain rejection that is happening from the people that are laughing at the mistake of the person who has fallen on the floor. What I hate, though, there, I still hate the fact that sometimes people laugh at things that you really can't control, especially when it comes to physical traits, like the excessive bushiness of certain parts of the, of the uh, body, the fact that you might have an unrepresentative, unrepresentative length when it comes to male reproductive organs, or the lack of protective coating on, on the uh, head area.
Now, the relief theory, the final theory that I'm going to discuss today, says that when there is a moment with a lot of tension, you could have a moment of relief to release all that pent-up energy, like a balloon just expanding and then kaplamming. As an example, the best way to explain this is through dark humor, such as the following jokes. Here's one from George Carlin. I recently heard about a mass murderer who killed 17 people in three days. They say he was a loner. Well, of course he was. He apparently killed everyone he came in contact with. Here's one from Stephen King. I like to tell people I have the heart of a small boy. Then I say it's in a jar on my desk. Ben Franklin has the following joke. In order for three people to keep a secret, two must be dead. Yeah. Here's also something. Have you noticed that when it comes to people who are higher up on the social ladder, they tend to be funnier than people who are below it? Because it actually is the case. If you were in the same room with Vlad the Impaler, okay, and you were back during the time where he was still impaling people, what is the likelihood that you wouldn't laugh at one of his jokes? If you didn't, you would probably end up with a stick shoved up all the way through your anal canal and then through your mouth. So, so you should probably really be laughing. Okay? Yeah, you do that. Have you also noticed that when you laugh, you feel good? Because laughter can be, to a certain extent, the best medicine. Or, in a more accurate term, the best recreational drug. Why? Because when you laugh, dopamine is released. And dopamine is a chemical that influences your pleasure and reward system. You also get a dose of endorphins in your body that resemble opiates, which relieve pain and, at the same time, give you a high. Laughter also stands guard against emotions that have physiological effects that might not exactly be too good for your body, such as anger, which creates a stress response in your body in anticipation of whatever is that is making you angry. But if you were to, say, use dark humor and you manage to turn that anger into laughter, then you are able to de-stressify yourself and by doing this frequently you create a gap between the the times when you feel stressed and the times that you do not feel so stressed so that's a very good thing that laughter can do for you it turns out that the effects of laughter on the body are so extensive that there's an entire field of study for such a thing it's called gelatology and the people who work in it are called gelatologists now, before I end this, I know that there's a thought swimming about there somewhere that says that you can't science humor. Humor just happens. That's it. You know, how, how would you science funny? Unfortunately, you can. And it would be a waste if you don't because, I mean, it is such an important thing of our lives. It happens pretty much on a daily basis and it's a universal thing that it wouldn't make sense for you not to study it. Do you see, you know, why we really need to know why humor really is funny. And this is why, you know, humor is funny. And with that, thank you very much.